They didn't volunteer for this at all. They volunteered for an administration that would use them only for true national security purposes and not for wars of choice. And I think they are telling us right now by statements that I just read that we, we the people need to be helping them. They are our brothers and sisters. How many of you all have friends, neighbors, family members that are in the military right now? Yeah, yeah. And all you, you know, you've talked to them. They're worn out. They are flat worn out. And if this is so important, if, if, if Iran is such an important thing that the United States has to take care of something there, and what would it be? Is it, that, is it the nuclear program or is it this long 40, 50 year anger because some Iranian militants took 50 of our diplomats and then eight of our military were killed in trying to rescue them? What is the source of this? Is it the fact that the Iranians are saying, yes, we will have a nuclear program, and we are saying it is, we are enriching uranium for energy purposes, and that's it. And then we have an administration that doesn't believe them. And then the Iranians do things that make all of us wonder, you know, what are they doing? Why don't they want the, the weapons inspectors in there? The Iranians aren't helping themselves at all on if indeed they want nuclear energy. You know, the Russians are in there. They're, they're building the first nuclear power plant. It's underway, or it's, the building of it's underway. It's already online. No, I don't think it's online. Oh, yes, it is. It just came online a few weeks ago. No, I don't. I just got that from, I got friends in Iran. They just sent me that. Okay. Well, well, we can discuss this later. The, the reports that I have are that it's still under construction, uh, but we'll discuss it. The other, uh, the other two parts, though, are that uh, they're putting out for bid right now, they're requesting bids from the international community for t two more nuclear energy plants. And they intend, just like the United States did at one time, they, they intend to have nuclear energy as a major part of their energy program. I mean, even though they are a great producer of oil, just like the United States produces oil, but we also have other types of energy. How many nuclear plants do we have in operation right now? None? How many? Yeah, 100, 103. So we have a nuclear energy program, and they, they're saying that they're, for their long-term energy purposes, they need to have at least 20 nuclear power plants in operation. And so they have one that is either online or under construction, two more that are out for international bids. Right now, who furnishes the, the nuclear material or the material for, for these reactors? It's a part of the plan, it's a part of the package that the, the nuclear materials are going to be sent in from other places like Russia. But the, Iran, the Iranians are saying, we don't want to depend on Russia, and we start, are, certainly aren't going to depend on the United States of America for sending us materials to run nuclear power plants, because we know what will happen there. We, we do have a moniker with the uh, United States called the axis of evil, so we wouldn't want to rely on the United States. So we do have, we do have some big, big challenges with, um, with Iran. I think the verdict is out on my, on my count as to what's going to happen there. I think, the, I think the, that probably six months ago there was a very big possibility that the United States was going to go do some sort of major military action in Iraq. The reports are that there are small actions that are going on right now from, from Iraq into Iran. But I think because the American public heard last fall all about this, the, the, the possibility of going into Iran, that that really has put the, the uh, uh, administration on the defensive. And with the, the things that have happened in the last three weeks, with the, uh, with the Iranians capturing the British, with the British not responding with force, and some of the newspaper reports that came out after the, the uh, uh, sailors were released, where the, United, where the British told the United States we don't want you to do any aggressive actions in this area. The United States had come forward to say, not surprisingly, 
we'll go get them, we'll take care of them. If you can't take care of them, we'll do it. And the British said, no, we're going to handle this our way. We do not want aggressive actions going on. And they backed off. They backed off because they had certain rules of engagement. Rules of engagement that, can you all still hear okay? Okay. Uh, rules of engagement that said we are not going to respond with military force if something happens, that we will, we, were, we will work it out diplomatically. Now, of course, in this country, I mean, the, the airwaves just really heated up badly about, you know, the wimps, the British wimps. They're not, you know, they're not protecting their own sailors. They're not doing all that. In fact, I ended up being not only on Bill O'Reilly's show where we were talking about the reason I got invited on there. I mean, you, you, you get phone calls saying, would you, uh, would you come on a show, either Hannity's show or Bill O'Reilly's show? And it's always with great trepidation that you say, oh... What's the subject? And uh, it's usually, well, this one was, no, hum no American human rights groups are um, uh, yelling about the fact that the Iranians are parading the uh, British uh, captives around and uh, showing them on TV, and that's a human rights violation, and why aren't the American human rights uh, people up in arms on that? I said, well, I don't represent one of those organizations, but you know, for once I do agree with you, Fox, that indeed that is a violation of international law, that the Iranians should not be presenting those people on, on TV. It's a violation of the Geneva Convention. And uh, so they said, well, we'll call you back in a little while and see if we want you on. Well, about an hour later they said, yes, we'd like to have you come on. So that afternoon, I was in a studio in Portland, Oregon, and Bill O'Reilly was in New York City, and, and he started in on this. Well, you know, it's that, the, the Americans, we always, we always are badgering our own people, and those Iranians, they're getting away with everything on, on this. And I said, well, Bill, you know, they, they are violating the Geneva Convention. They're parading those people around as a public curiosity, which is forbidden by the Geneva Convention. And even though there was not a declared war, uh, you always want to afford the highest degree of care for anybody that's in your custody. It gives you the moral high ground should any of your people be captured anywhere. So I said, yeah, the, the Iranians should be taken to task on this. And also, we, the United States, have to recognize that we have not done right by a lot of the prisoners that we've had. We've paraded them around, too. And we need to, take, we need to be on the moral high ground, and we need to stop violating international law ourselves. Well, of course, that just set Bill off on, well, you hate America. You've always hated America. I mean, people like you, you're just unpatriotic. You're this, that, and the other thing. And, oh, God, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on. And finally, you, the, the way I've figured out on these shows is you just take one really deep breath, one really deep breath. You have one or two points to get across through the whole time, and then you just take a breath and start talking. Well, so I started talking, you know, saying, no, this, you know, everybody ought to be held accountable for, uh, for the, the international law, that would, none of us should be breaking these international laws. The Iranians are culpable, the United States is, da-da-da-da. Well, Bill then came in, well, you're just unpatriotic, and da-da-da. And finally, at the last of it, I said, well, Bill, I was in the military for 29 years and 16 years in a, as a diplomat, and what have you done? And uh, right with that, on the air, it was, cut her mic off, cut the mic, cut the mic. <laughs> so uh, that, that, was, um, uh, that was kind of interesting to, to be there. That got a lot of play, where he didn't really want to hear anything about backgrounds of, of you know, I told him on the air that I'd taught the, inter the law of land warfare in the Geneva Conventions at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where I was back in the in the middle 80s, and I've taught special forces folks and the, some of the 82nd Airborne. You know, with, people know what the rules and regulations are when you're in the military. They know what you can do and you can't do, except now they're in a little bit of a, bit of a quandary because the U.S. Congress uh, went along with the, with the Bush administration with this new Military Commissions Act that they passed in October of last, last year, which has really muddied the waters on what torture is. You know, that, that indeed now we, we do uh, uh, degrading 
uh, things to people. We just don't call it torture, but it's degrading. I mean, by law, we can do that. Uh, they, we do things uh, that if they were done to any one of us, we would certainly call it torture. Well, these are, these are things that have really muddied up what, how our military now, uh, how they're taught, how they're trained, uh, we have uh, an incident where at West Point, uh, one of the, some of the staff members at West Point went to um, the production team of the, the TV show 24 Hours because there was so much torture that was going on on that show and it was indicating that it was, it was okay, that it, by, by law it was okay to be doing the things that were on that show, that government officials it was their right to torture people as was being portrayed on there. And apparently the cadets at West Point were, were asking so many questions of their instructors of, is that really true? Can we do that? We saw it on 24 hours. That, that they went to the production team to say, you're showing, what, you're showing stuff that, that America does not need to be known. We, we don't need to be doing that. We shouldn't be doing it. It's illegal. And yet now it's common knowledge on TV that that's what we do. And our cadets are thinking that's what they're supposed to do, even though they are being taught on one level that you're not supposed to, except for this new law in October of 2006 that says, yes, you can do some of this stuff. So we've really gotten a, a very clouded picture of what America is, what we stand for. We don't stand for the normal Geneva Conventions. We stand for the American version of it. An American version of it that I think, along with a lot of other things, puts us in a very difficult dilemma. Dilemmas in Iraq and dilemmas coming up in Iran. And it's going to be a, a, a fascinating time in the next three months to see what happens. Fascinating in, in terms of whether or not we, the people of the United States, can stop an administration from doing something that will get us e even further in the world's doghouse. And that would be by doing a military action on Iran. So why don't I stop there? And that's about 30 minutes worth, isn't it? And uh, why don't we have a discussion about this? And what, what are your comments and feelings and what are your projections on it? <laughs>